allow us to journey into these altered states. It really whacked me psyche though, big time. If you just sit reading books, you know, it's the shadow because you're not going to be in your body. Welcome to Creating Space. Bringing people together. Real conversations with real people. Telling stories and sharing our gifts right here in the heart of Liverpool. Inspiring new ideas, education and co-creation. Choose a challenge that lights you up and is going to make a difference in the world. Creating Space. Sponsored by the Scouse Guru app. Okay, welcome back. We are on the platform of Creating Space. This is episode 15, um, and this is an episode that I'd like to call The Journey of Man. I've got three uh, incredible fellas in the studio today. We've actually got a new studio. Um, we're at a, um, a place in Liverpool. So we're sitting off, we're ready comfy, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. We've got Jimmy Smith, who's representing the Coldwater community. We've got Paul Garrigan, uh, representing Pac Mentality. And, uh, and we've got a special guest today, uh, Mr. Jonathan Hunter. Um, he is a digital marketing guru, uh, and he's actually the guy who's been behind the camera, um, you know, capturing all this footage over the last uh, 18 months. So lovely to have you guys on. Um, really looking forward to diving into this conversation. You know, it's very much about, you know, what we're doing in Liverpool, um, what's the intention behind what we're doing and and how's the process, you know, and, and how is, you know, not just your own experience and your own journey as a man, but how is the process now where you're stepping up, holding space for others? So, gents, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you, brother. How are we? Good. <laughs> <laughs> let's get, yeah, let's get that little laugh in there, you know what I mean? You know, settle your nerves. Because, uh, you know, I've done this many times, so I know it, it can be new to, you know, some people in the studio, so... It's um, all is welcome, yeah. So let's just have a brief check in. You know, um, what's what's alive for you? What's like immediately alive for you? And then we'll uh, and then we'll start leaning into you know today's conversation. So, Johnny, how are we? I'm checking and feeling absolutely energized, mate. We've just got back from Men Without Masks June retreat and just being able to be behind the camera and watch all the men do that amazing mm. work and actually be a part of that team just phew, lights me up man yeah man so, we had a new we were in a new venue weren't we yeah we're at Broughton Hall now which is just like the next level to it yeah a beautiful estate like a thousand acres yeah state of the art spa facility in there so feeling proper energised feeling rejuvenated just can't wait to yeah. watch that grow mate yeah it was massive wasn't it you know you know we had a we've got a um, a new member of the team Mac on obviously mm. and and but we've 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 now moved from like twelve men to twenty men, haven't we? Yeah. And um, you know, the, the the estate itself is able to hold that space for the men as not just for the process that you know that we do. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely in the same camp, feeling energized, feeling grounded. Uh, I had an amazing five days last week and it was great to just watch this process for the men, you know, unfold and and um yeah, feeling there. Uh, it was just nice to enjoy the facilities, wasn't it? Food was great, weather was great, and the facilities alone, you know, I mean, I think we must have had about 10 saunas, but as well as the sweat lodge, you know what I mean? So, you know, we were, uh, we had a good time, though, didn't we, lad? It was great. Yeah, yeah. it was amazing. It's like a holiday with It really itself, is. Right? Yeah, it really is. So, we've got a couple of retreats coming up, one in September and one in November, and I think it's now becoming a household name, you know what I mean? And obviously, looking forward to leaning into the conversation with you guys because that's a, an experience you both have been on, you know, with. With uh, with myself and the team over at Men Without Masks. So Jimmy, let's check in. How are you getting on? Do you know what, mate? I'm, uh, I've had a couple of days. I've decided to take um, have a little bit of Jimmy time. Yeah, nice. Uh, a couple of days ago, I've had a pretty hectic last six months. Um, and obviously, as you know, just getting into the fire service, mm -hmm. doing four months four months training there, um, which was intense within itself. But then I added a little bit of spice to that by creating uh, the cold water community. Nice. So I've been working pretty much, well, not pretty much, I've been working seven days a week for the last six months. Yeah. So uh, this past few days, I've decided I'm going to uh, just have a little bit of a rest. Yeah. Take a breath. Yeah. Uh, and sort of, re sort of reorganise and mm. streamline and yeah. move forward with the, with the cold, north, nice. cold water community. Yeah. In a positive way. Yeah. You've just got to tighten them screws a little bit now and then, haven't we? Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. You're looking great, by the way. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, we don't we haven't seen each other for quite some time, and every time I see you, there's just a massive transformation in your looks. And I know you're not just working on your physical body, but mm -hmm. you've been doing a lot of work on yourself over the last eighteen months, couple of years, um, and it's just showing in your face, it's showing in your physical demeanour. So, welcome to the studio, mate. I'm Thank glad you you're here. Looking forward to diving into all that stuff and seeing where you know all unfolds. And Paul, how are we? Boss, mate. You know, um, the past couple of weeks, mate, probably just. 
still diving into the inner work myself. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm holding space now for a lot of men. Yeah. Um, so things are coming up for me in the process. Yeah. Um, but it's just, you know, it's all good, mate. It's all welcome. Yeah. And it's exciting, mate. Yeah. I'm mean, um, really looking forward to, to this show, mate. Yeah, it's an exciting time for you, yeah, isn't I'm it? really you know excited, I mean? mate, yeah. yeah. But a bit nervous at the same time. Yeah. But it's all new to me. Of course. Yeah. You know, it's uncertain, isn't it? You know, it's unknown. But anyone who dives into that uncertainty, you know what I mean? And, and you know, moves towards that space where you're not just doing your own inner work, but you're now holding space for others because that's what we're all doing now, yeah. you know what mm. I mean? You know, and, and I, I feel like th there's this commonality between us where actually we, there's an intention to, you know, share our gifts, share our talents with the world um, and hold space for others, you know, yeah. hold space and, and bring people together. I mean, community is massive now, isn't it? You know what I mean? And getting into that common unity where we're bringing people together, we're offering people a service and we're allowing people to be vulnerable. We're, you know, we're allowing... Um, a safe container for people to express themselves and learn. You know, I know what we're doing here. People are learning more about themselves. They're being educated. Um, and, and I think, you know, there's such a confused map of masculinity nowadays. Um, and I think for me, the pandemic's been a really good thing because it allows us, it brings about some agency, doesn't it? You know what I mean? It's like, okay, there's, there's this collective story going on. But really, you know, it's it's what can I do in this story? Do you know what I mean? And how can I take take responsibility for my own life, do this in a way, and then you know bring it back into the world and hold space for others? Mm. Because you know we're all sitting here, we're all men, mm. and we all want know what it's like to 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 be a man. But to have to 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 have our struggles, you know what I mean? We've all gone through our processes, and we've all struggled, and we've all got a story to tell. But when you come out of it the other side, you know, the work never, it never stops. It's always continuing. But then to have that courage to go, you know what? I've, I've got an idea here. I've got, I've got something I want to put together and we're going to do this for the benefits of other men growing and other women, you know, I know yeah. like pack mentality, you're now moving in, in, in that direction of, of serving, holding space for women yeah. as well. So, you know, let's, I'm looking forward to, to leaning into that. So, you know, I think talking about it today, we've got, we're talking about this journey of man, you know what I mean? And, I want to sort of lean into your own journeys, uh, you know, and, um, and just lean into your stories. And, and how has it been for you, you know, growing up in Liverpool, being a man? And then how has that really then had an effect on, I suppose, where you are, you know, now today as a man? How are you holding space and what is it that is is inspiring you to do what you're doing? So, Jamie, let's start with you. Um, so, so for me, I'll go start off with my journey from the start was born into a bit of a chaotic life. life. Mm. My father was an alcoholic. Um, he was around for the first five, six years of my life. And sort of being, as you know, being that seed growing around that, um, you're gonna, I, was, I took a, a lot of that on. Um, mm. Being around sort of abuse towards me, sort of abuse towards my mother. Mm. Um, he was just an ill man. Obviously, I can say that now because he's no longer with us. But yeah. uh, at the, throughout my life, there was a lot of hatred there that I oh. held on, yeah. which I was then sort of took his stuff on and ab abused myself. So I started drinking from the age of like 11 years of age, mm -hmm. around about then. So you can imagine then I took on that baton then of mm -hmm. sort of with you. I was around the abusive men for the first 10 years of my mm -hmm. life. I then became an abusive man um, in every which way, shape or form, mm -hmm. um, through drink, drugs, alcohol, um, not being the best version of myself in relationships, mm -hmm. really, um, Knowing in deep inside that I was not a bad person, but I wasn't doing great things. I was just dealing with a lot of stuff. I yeah. was uh, constantly just feeling suicidal and anxious. But at the time, I didn't know what it was. I was just like, I felt different. So I'd, I'd mm -hmm. go to places and just feel like the odd one out. Mm -hmm. Or I'd go and like, if I was going to like the 05 or pleasure rooms and stuff like that, when I was going out to town, I used to have to get absolutely rotten drunk yeah. to, 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 to calm this feeling that I used to have inside me. And obviously now looking back, I know it was anxiety and stuff yeah. and social anxiety. Um, yeah, so I, as I progressed through that, um, that lasted for a good, I'm going to say almost 20 years. Because yeah. um, then... you're a man about town, aren't you, mate? You know what I mean? Yeah. You're well known, yeah. you know, and you, you were known you know, for, for, for leaning into, you know, different circles, mm. you know, different things over a period of time, not just nightlife, but all of the, you know, you know I know you were into like... Um, Going away with Liverpool and all that, yeah. mate, you know what I mean, yeah. and stuff like that. So, you know, just just let, let that flow and tell us a little bit more about all that. So I fell into sort of that scene. Um, I think that was just, it was a, a thing of, it was that being around them, the men and yeah. that, that sort of love mm -hmm. that I didn't have from my father. For yeah. me. And that, now I look back, it was like wanting to be loved by 
people around it. That's yeah, all I wanted. to be seen by and elders. It, yeah. And then what it is, is with, with falling into that, then obviously you go down the route of drugs, alcohol, um, violence, yeah. being around that, and sort of feeling like that's the norm. Mm. And because you, you're, and, and you know what? The, the, the guys who were around, they, they're not bad guys neither. They're obviously going through their yeah. own stuff. And that's what it is with what I've realized with everyone. There's, there's not a bad person. Mm. There's just people, everyone's going through their own process. We've got a shadow of them, you know yeah. what I mean? It plays yeah. out. Yeah. And uh, I think in that environment, uh, I sort of, I was using it as a void. Mm. I think I was using it as a void massively. Yeah, I think that's what it was with every aspect because I fell into sort of different scenes. It was the gay scene, yeah. it was the football scene, flaunting yeah. flaunt about from scene to scene. And really all I was trying to do was just fit in. Fill a void, uh, yeah. Yeah, fit in and sort of put myself across uh, where... I was, wasn't being true to myself. I don't mm. think I was just sort of not being myself. I was wanting to blend in with the crowd mm. um, and get myself into trouble along the way um, f- throughout that. Um, so, yeah, that that, that was f- lasted for a good part of, like, 20 years. Um, and then throughout that process, obviously, I was taking a lot of drugs, drinking a lot, gambling. And with that, my me, me mental health just spiralled and mm. went much worse to the point where I was suicidal, of a attempt, attempted suicide. Um and for me to to push through all that, and it was just a constant merry-go-round of like, when's this gonna stop? When's mm. this gonna stop? And it took for me to just for me dad to die. Um, yeah. He drank himself to death. He wasn't in my life a lot through my life, but he, he, when he did, it was bouts of in and out, and it affected me massively. Yeah. Um, and when he finally went, it was my sort of like bump, a look in the mirror. Um, I had a few experiences. Um, when he when he died, that sort of connected me with him um, mm. through breath work and yeah. f- through other through in in other ceremonies. That yeah. sort of I'd never been connected with him throughout my whole life, and made mm. me understand him because he was me. Yeah. Um, but he just he didn't have a Martin Bone. Yeah. He didn't have a member without masks. He didn't have the luxuries mm. of what we've got yeah. in front of us now. And sort of that was for me what led me to the point of going to the cold water. Turn into breath work, watching more meditation, yeah. and then eventually sort of opening up the co- starting the cold water community yeah. uh, throughout that sort of dark place. Yeah, and uh, after men without masks, it was uh, that was the I, f- I think the most defining point in my life. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. um, and it was it was that last day where you just sat there and just told me everything about yeah. about me good. King's Cross. And it, yeah, and we sat there and it was just like with a crown on. Yeah. F- surrounded by really strong, powerful men. Yeah. You've been on a journey with for five days. You, you know each other inside out, you know, and, and you feel like you feel safe as well, don't yeah. you with them Yeah, fellas? yeah. And it was respected as well. It was yeah. like felt respected, but I had the utmost of respect for everyone there. Yeah. And I think one of the main things, I think it was you said to me, I want you to go into energy healing, I want you to do this. Mm. It was like All inside space. the new. Yeah. I, I knew that was sort of the way I was heading. Mm-hmm. I, I, it was because I was. I found a lot of people were drawn to me to be able to talk and yeah. for advice and sort of offer advice. Because you've been there, done it, more the t shirt, yeah. mates, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Ten times over, as you said, you know, living a life 20 years, you know, and, and, and being in all of them circles at different times, you know, tasting that pain, you know, attempting suicide. Like it's not, you know, you, you've really, you've, you've hit some really low points in your yeah. life, haven't you? Many, yeah. many of them. And I know there was also an inspiration to become um, a part of the fire service within mm. all that, wasn't it? But yeah. you probably didn't have enough self worth to really go on that journey until until recently, you yeah. know? Yeah, it was. That was a, a, a massive, like, sort of, literally, I, I can, far as I can remember, to be honest with you, like, I, I always wanted to be a firefighter. Mm. But the only thing that was holding me back was struggling to be around was 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 men. Yeah. Because, because I had that, um, because of me feeling it was what had happened, of being around that abuse when I was younger. Yeah. Um, it was a trigger for me. I either wanted to fight them or yeah. I wanted to run away. Yeah. And obviously to go, so, so evidently at the age of 16, I became a hairdresser. Yeah. And I, I was working with women, do you know yeah. what I mean, for three years? Because th- that was just sort of how it, how it flowed, how, how my life went. Mm. But yeah, um, push through and eventually, yeah, sort of put, g- give that last sort of, d- d- right, okay. Once my dad died, it was like, I'm going to actually achieve what I should be achieving. Yeah. I'm going to be the person who, who I should be. Yeah, who I want to uh, be. Step back from yeah. people who... Mm. Not necessarily bad people, or not necessarily people who, who aren't right for me. It was just I'm, I'm just going to just forging your own now. path, isn't yeah. it? And yeah. and like and and once and for all constructing mm. your life and stepping into your potential, you know. And so you know you've spoken about memory out masks and the meditation. So where did all that sort of start? That journey of like self development and healing, like 
you know, if you rewind, you know, I've known you for about 18 months, couple of years, mm. but there was definitely stuff going on before that because yeah. it led you to me and, and then, you know, it led you on, uh, you know, um, the journey of the fellowship and, and, and you know, member out mask. And then that took you to the cold water community, which I'm looking forward to leaning into. But where was, you know, your dad died mm. and then you started doing some inner work on yourself. So where yeah. did that start? See, I'd start, I think before that I'd started trying to do the inner work, but I think it, he was a massive um, wound for me. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, there was a sense of like feeling of guilt because of the situation he was in. Um, and then I knew the day was going to come mm. um, because of the lifestyle he was living. Mm. Um, and I, I think when he, when he, when he went, um, that was the catalyst, but I had been doing it previously. I, I actually, looking back, I remember being around about 15, 16 years of age, not knowing what breath work was or not mm. knowing what, what meditation was. But I remember used to count, into, count in my head and focus on that counting on my head yeah. before I knew what anything was. And I remember it used to allow me to be able to go into go to sleep because I've always struggled to yeah. sleep. So I think I was meditating sort of sort of subcon subconsciously yeah. without even knowing what I was yeah. doing and, and and sort of I used to do breath work before yeah. I knew what it knew what it was. Yeah. Which is which is which is strange, but I think that shows you how sort of in tune you can be without even having the knowledge. Mm, absolutely. Um, so then, yes. Yeah, so what was the question? Because that's our naturalness, isn't it? You know yeah. what I mean? And so, and then obviously, you know, so your dad passed away mm. and then you started leaning into like, you know, a lot more, you know, looking within yourself. Mm. I mean, take, as you said, you started looking in the mirror. Yeah. That's the big one, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so what, what, what did that look like at the start? Who, 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 who was you leaning into? Was it, was it a bit of yoga? You know, because I know you're good mates with Kev Deves as well, aren't yeah. you? And, yeah. And I know you, you were floating in certain circles and exploring some psychedelics, and there was stuff going on for a bit, wasn't there? Mm, yeah. So for me, there was there was times where I was I was going to see Kev and having sort of one to ones with him, and I'm doing a lot of a lot of breath work, a lot of meditation, and and he was sort of the guy when I was in my darkest spaces, yeah, who would pull pull me out of them darkest spaces, and actually when I was suicidal would make me pull me out, um, and sort of make me process stuff and make me realize you know what it, it, you, you're holding on to it you mm. can actually release it and that's yeah. i think where that's translated into the cold war community with the breath work that people these people come and have a little short moments of shares yeah for me that's another thing the shares your my first one with you on that level one yeah was a was it was huge it was opened up pandora's box yeah. but before that i didn't realize i was doing that yeah. with kev of course um, and then i i sort of i've always been one to enjoy to have a, a sort of a, a vulnerable honest true conversation yeah. um and i think that's why i, st I struggle to fit in yeah because um it's it's not so sometimes it's not welcomed yeah um well psychological safety is massive isn't it you know what i mean and like when you actually feel safe that you can share you know mm. or, or you know, like vocalize shame mm. and and open up to somebody you 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 know you you you're healing when you yeah. vocalize and shame yeah, yeah. and so in them moments, you know, being with Kev, starting to share. And then I remember it well, you know, you coming on to that level one, it was over two days and it was a great gang of people, you know what yeah, I mean? Beautiful. And and I think feeling into that, that almost cleanliness, you know what I mean? It's like, wow, I actually feel safe here. Yeah. And going on that journey of being educated on like what meditation really is and, you know, having all that, having that process over two days and then there's like a 30 day, you know, accountability that we go on. And then that was like, I know it was a massive weekend for you, that, you know what yeah. I mean? Because I remember like you actually sitting at the side and almost behind someone and you came to share and it was like, I, I, I was that the was last it, one. Then. That was I it. Was, I was trying to dive it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was. Yeah. I, I remember going round and I was like, and then you, I think you, I, I, I thought, oh, he's going to move on here. It's all, I, I'm, I've made it for yeah. you know what I mean? And then you just went like, you looked behind someone and went, do you want to do you want to share? And yeah, like, come on. Oh, and and you had long hair at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But from that moment, that was Pandora's box. That changed yeah. everything. And I think that was for me. It was like how much of a powerful tool yeah. sharing and releasing yeah. and talking is. And um, that's why I've obviously incorporated it in what I'm doing. Oh, you've got, of course. Um, and for me, then I've, from that moment, I don't stop speaking. I and mean, mm. if it's if it's on my mind, I'd I'd rather get it off my chest. Yeah, you share it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all you're doing is and you've got some it. great people that you can now share share your yeah. stuff with, haven't you? And yeah. you feel safe in in, in opening up and like confidentiality is massive. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, I know that's a big part of you know what you're trying to achieve with the cold water community. Mm. It's like okay, we're sharing, but all this is confidential, guys. You yeah. know what I mean? And mm. it it's a it, it a lot of people sometimes people don't respect that you know confidentiality. And um, and really, it's because they're not respecting themselves. Yeah. You know, so we, we have to keep coming back to 
you know, finding these tools or going, guys, this is confidential, this, you know what I mean? And actually, if you're leaking this information, you know, then really it's on your head, you know what I mean? Can you look in the mirror and can you tell your own truth, you know? So mm. that's something that you're always going to get where you're feeling safe in, in holding space for people to, to, to purge and to express themselves. Um, cause that's when they do that, they feel open and a lot of healing and, and a lot of transformation happens and you're witnessing it on a weekly basis with yeah. all these people in, in these shares. So yeah, I think, um, you know, and, and you're not, you, you're no stranger then to, to the shares cause you know, you, you, you leaned into level two, didn't you? You went into the, obviously the magic 10 and then there was like an ecosystem of, of, you know, stuff you were feeling into and, and, and you know, you were doing other work elsewhere. Yeah. You know, you cracked on with work with, with Kev Thieves and then there was that journey with, Mem with Memor Out Masks, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, and, and then that's, that is just a, that was almost for me, you know, watching that catalyst then of mm. going, wow, okay, you, you, you're here, you, you're really, really now ready for this transformation. And, you know, there was obviously the fellowship and there was a lot of like, you know, the cold water yeah. at, at Crosby beach. Yeah. And, you know, we know we went camping a few times and there was a few parties. So there was also a community of people, wasn't there? You yeah. know what I mean? That, you know, you were enjoying. And I know some of these people are, uh, you know, are your closest friends today. Yeah. Um, so definitely looking forward to leaning into a bit more about your journey. Remember how masks had that unfolded and, and, and certainly talking about the, the cold water community and how that's having a massive impact in Liverpool because it's hot stuff at the minute and, you know, you're all over Instagram and everyone's looking at you and, and people are getting involved, aren't they? And mm. there's like, and, and, and it can be overwhelming, can't it? You know what yeah. I mean? There's like a yeah. lot of people now coming in your direction. It's like, okay, this is just always an opportunity to keep cleaning, you know, um, to keep tightening your screws, keep make sure there's levels of integrity. But yeah, really looking forward to it. Let's bring Paul into the conversation. So Paul, you know, having listened to, you know, where Jimmy's up to do this journey of man, how did it start for you? Like, you know, what, what was, um, you know, what was your relationship with, you know, growing up in Liverpool? Um, growing up for me, mate, was, you know, there's a lot of similarities, mate, between, um, between me and Jimmy. Um, my dad was an alcoholic and he went on to suffer majorly, mate, with, with mental health issues of his own. Um, my mum had tried quite a uh, traumatic upbringing herself. Um, so our household never felt for me like it was a safe environment to be in. Mm. Um, and that probably led me, mates, probably to about at the age of 10, where I noticed that I was pretty angry mm. all the time. And, you know, I went through high school pretty angry. Um, and I didn't really know why. And I sort of got into boxing then and things like that. And, yeah. and was embraced for that anger. But at, at the age of 15, mate, I, um, I started to take my own life mm. at that point. Um, but it, it weren't a cry for help because mm. I didn't tell anyone. Yeah. This is probably about the third or fourth time I've ever yeah. I've ever told anyone. Mm. Um, I took my dad's medication mm. and woke up probably a uh, day later. So I probably slept for 24 hours yeah. and woke up wired. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I didn't tell a soul. Yeah. Um, and then obviously leading on from that, mate, probably fell into the wrong sort of environments and, you know, drinking, yeah. drugs, yeah. Um, you know, it went as far as anabolic steroids. Yeah. Um, so I was taking cocaine, anabolic steroids, you know, getting on the on the tablets yeah. on weekends. Um, crazy partying scenes, mate, to yeah. be honest. But but just, you know, needing that attention mm. from... And I've finally figured that out, you know, doing all the inner work, I've done that, it was from men. Yeah. It was needing that attention and to be yeah. loved by men. And wanting to be like... Wanting to belong to something as well, isn't yeah. it? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know... Growing up in the household, you know, you, you, it sounds like maybe your father wasn't around, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that sort of disappearing father, there's like, you, you know, it, 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 we're raised by mothers, aren't we? You know what I mean? There's a father separation, then there's a mother dominance. And all of a sudden, like, you know, we, 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 we haven't got that sort of father yeah. figure there, yeah. which then uh, lacks initiation, you know, as yeah. you know. Mm. You know, there's, there's, there's a, the, we, we have like um, these initiations um, in the West, but it's not a sacred one, is it? You know what I mean? Um, you know, so growing up in yeah. Liverpool. So then now that, you know, fast forward things panning out yeah. in your life, you know, obviously you're a boxer. And I know you're a good boxer at that, aren't yeah. you? know, you, yeah. you, you boxed at a, at a decent level, didn't yeah. you? So that was obviously somewhere for you to channel your energy, yeah. you know, meet other men. But sometimes we just get lost a little bit down the yeah. rabbit hole, don't we? Look yeah. and we're starving for that for that connection with men. Yeah. But, you know, what comes with that is, is all that, like chasing women, you know, drink drugs, you know, as you said, anabolic yeah. steroids, which, you know, actually has a bit of a, 
adverse effect on your emotions, doesn't exactly. it? You know what I mean? And actually demasculinizes you, mate. It yeah. makes you less of a man. Yeah. If anything. And yeah. um, the amount that you're pumping into it, it actually brings out feminine qualities. Yeah, and yeah. you know, looking at the hormonal side of it, it brings in estrogen. Yeah. Which, you know, you can end up with breast lumps and things, all kinds yeah. of different problems, mate, that, that brings in. Yeah. That's not good if you've got mental health issues mm. um, that you're not addressing. And you know, certainly the boxing was an outlet, but I think you get pulled into things in this city, mate. Mm. And I was boxing, but I had I had no friends. Yeah. So I was just in the gym all the time, and I was like flying, absolutely, you know, smashing it if you yeah. like. And but all my mates were going out, drinking, yeah. and you know, and getting girls and stuff like that. And I sort of fell into the, that trap. Yeah. That that's what I needed to be to be accepted. And yeah. And then following on from that, mate, was like you know, obviously, what you do with girls, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I've always been with Carly, but you're seeking validation of girls, yeah. but I was seeking that through men. Yeah. So I'd want, I'd want men to, I'd go and tell my story to a man Yeah. Of, of, of what I'd been up to, you know, like I said, yeah. that's a good thing. Like, oh yeah, I've, I've done this with that girl or we've yeah. done this with that girl. And yeah. you know, that's, that's not the right way to be. No. Um, and it's, it's, it was doing it for all the wrong reasons. Mm. Um, and you know, it's, it's been a major, major wake up call me the past mm. couple of years for me, which is, is amazing. It's been an amazing journey, mate, but yeah. I'm still going through it and working yes. through things every day. Yeah. Never ends, does it? Never ends. You know what mate. I mean? But it, you know, it, it takes courage to sort of, you know, we're naturally competing, aren't we, as well? You know what I mean? We have this longing to connect. You know, we, we're looking for love. You know, we're looking to be loved. And this sort of longing to like connect with men, to be accepted. And then, but also at the same time, we're conditioned to compete with one another. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, that's where we're, we're, we're naturally like competing with the, with the man next door or, you know, the, the, you know, the men in the gym, you know what I mean? Who's yeah. got the biggest muscles, yeah. who's got the fastest car, who's got the most money, you know what I mean? Who's selling yeah. the most drugs, all that. And you just get completely and utterly lost yeah. in it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and all, and, and deep down, we're just like these little boys inside starving for actually some, some blessing. Absolutely. starving for some initiation by some elders, you know yeah. what I mean? So, you know, your father wasn't around. Who was a father figure then for you? Did you have any, like, elders around you, that, that, you know, growing up? Yeah. You know, people that sort of maybe kept you on the straight and narrow? Yeah, I'd say the, the one person me was my boxing coach at yeah. the time, which obviously he couldn't keep a, keep me under a tight leash yeah. outside of boxing. Mm. Um, so that was shit to thank. He was, like, a massive role model for me and a mm. massive role model in, in my area. Yeah. Um, but other than that, mate, I was probably always looking up to the wrong men. Yeah. Like you say, the fast cars, the drug dealing. Yeah. You know, I ended up on the doors, working on the doors, pumping yeah. steroids into me and trying to be the biggest, trying to be the hardest. Yeah. Whether it was any attention, like, good or bad. Yeah. You know, if people feared. Yeah. Wanted to fight with me, I, I was game for a fight. Yeah. Um, always ending up and saying, you know, just putting myself in bad environments. Yeah. And, you know, karma comes back to you, mate. So yeah. if you're putting out bad, it's going to come back yeah. in one way or another. And there's another. always someone there, isn't there? Or there's exactly. always a nutter, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and then, you, you know, you end up just, <laughs> you're just thinking, and then, you know, it's like you've almost got to show that face and yeah. step into that place and you think, oh, I don't know if I'm up for this, you know yeah. what I mean? You know, because deep down, you know, you're just actually... You're good. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you know you're a good person. You know, you're a good man. And you know yeah. it's not you, but you're playing up. You're putting a mask on for other people. Yeah. And it, it sort of hit me once, once, mate, when I was about 21. And, you know, I got asked someone robbed a bike or something like that. And a mate of mine said, come down. Um, come down and front these lads with us. And we go down. And the lads pull up in the next five, if it is. And we're game, you know, sealed up, ready yeah, to have yeah. a fight, mate. And the back window went, goes down and shotgun comes out the window. Wow. You know, I'm 21 yeah. thinking I'm, you know, thinking I can take the yeah, world Johnny on me. Yeah. yeah. You know, the arse soon fell out of me. <laughs> like you that. Uh, that's all I keep the bike. <laughs> Josh, I'll get you another one of you. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Yeah. You know. And sometimes it, we, we, it's, it's having these wake-up calls, isn't yeah. it? You know what I mean? You know, it's, uh, and it's, you, we taste death sometimes or we yeah. get close to it, don't we? You're like, yeah. oh, hang on a minute. So that was obviously a wake up call for you yeah. then, Paul. And I know you've been with your partner for, for many years and, and you've actually got a couple of kids, haven't you? You yeah. know what I mean? You've got yeah. a couple of boys, yeah. two lovely lads. Yeah. Um, and that's initiating in itself. I know yeah. it takes time to become a man, doesn't it? You know yeah. what I mean? And you talk about doing this work the last couple of years, but you know, you um, having children, you know, and, and stepping into that role. Um, and I know you've got a solid job there as well. You know what you do for a living. I know you, you've got Pac mentality, but yeah, you know, f- full time project manager. Yeah. 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 So then how did, how did that unfold then through your 20s? You know, you've been on the doors, you, you know, you've had all, you, you know, you're trying to like prove yourself to yeah. the world. But then where did things maybe start changing? Was it meeting Carly? Was it having your first child? Like, you know, how did things unfold? I'd say mate, meeting Carly was, 
we were, I was probably 15, 16. Right. We've been together that long. Yeah. Obviously, we split up a lot of times, probably most of it through my my yeah. fault, um, through being a boy. Yeah. Um, and not taking responsibility for, for my own life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had Aiden, mate. I was probably about, I was 18, 19. Yeah. We had Aiden, and that just didn't wake me up at yeah. all. Um, but I got in trouble, mate, on the doors. Mm. I had a couple of fights, um, two weekends on the bounce. Yeah. Got taken to, to the, the, the police station. Yeah. Um, was up in court. And yeah, I got, I got community service. They were going to put me down for six months. Yeah. But I lost my job. Yeah. Um, like I say, talking about karma, I lost my job at the time. And what what is a blessing now was Carly got, she got pregnant yeah. at the time. But at the, I had just lost my job. I was going to court. Yeah. I had a good time. Yeah. But that sort of, the penny dropped. That was it. That was it, Got mate. a step up. Yeah. yeah. Got a step up. And, you know, I went and joined the, the reserve regiments, the, the parachute regiments. Yeah. Because um, I thought, what's the most initiating thing I can do? To, yeah. I didn't think initiating at the time, yeah. but I thought, what's the hardest thing I can do to make me break this chain yeah. of being a boy and yeah. get away from the drugs and let the old me... Yeah, the bullshit. Yeah, get rid of the bullshit. Yeah. Um, so I went and done that, mate, and I passed, and I got me maroon beret. And, nice. You know, it went on from there. I kicked... I haven't sort of stopped from there, mate. That was when the self-development sort of started yeah. unconsciously. Yeah. Um, and then following that, you know, I sort of went offshore. Yeah, so nice. working in Saudi Arabia and things like that. So I realised the power of my mind at that point because no one was getting offshore. Yeah, but I'm, I'm manifested it and made it happen. Yeah, it was happening. You know, I was there. Um, but that's when you know self awareness and me awareness of what what I was feeling internally mm. was really bubbling up. Mm. Like like all anxiety was coming up every time we used to go away, leaving me boys. It was yeah. it was really tough, mate. Yeah, to be honest. Because we do, you know, you talked about initiation there and you didn't know at the time that you were looking for initiation, but we we all unconsciously are starving for initiation mm. and men naturally seek danger. So, you know, you, you know, being on the Zors fighting, getting into all this, like, all this, uh, all these experiences which weren't serving you. You're just, not just seeking validation, but the psyche is actually seeking initiation. You know what I mean? And, um, and, and that's, you know, that's why, like, so many men nowadays, like, I think it's like every six arrests, five are men. You know what I mean? And like so many men are in the prison system, you know what I mean? And and really somewhere in their experience, they're just looking for some sort of sacred initiation. And in the West, we haven't got any, mm. you know what I mean? Um, you know, if you, if you look at other sort of tribes around the world, you know, the, 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 the elders, you know, the men, the grandfathers, the fathers, the uncles, even the older brothers, they'll they'll take the, the, the younger boy around the age of, you know, 10, 11, 12, away from the mothers and, and then some of them uh, and they'll go and initiate them you know what I mean so the, and, and it's almost a near-death experience to initiate the psyche into that mature masculinity um and then you know they're ready to be integrated back into the into the um into the tribe as such but we just haven't got that in the yeah. west have we you know no. what I mean you know as you were saying there's, there's there's not enough sort of men elders you know like really mature kings as such yeah. who were like holding a good space you know what i mean like showing us how to do it you only have to look at like you know the video games or you don't have to look on the telly you know what i mean you know people are watching like the godfather or sopranos like don't get me wrong fucking great shows you know what i mean because we all watch them yeah. and we all enjoy them but there's, there's just this sort of like toxic masculinity which yeah. is like being pumped left right and center towards our direction of, of how we should be a man you yeah. know what is it that we should be doing yeah. and you know again it's like you've had these experiences you know someone's pulled a gun on you do you know what i mean or you you've you know you've got a second child and and you know you, you you're nearly going to jail and then that's just that wake up call and yeah. it and you listen to your own reason in the end and you're like okay right i've got to step up here yeah so you know going away initiating you know um getting offshore going through that process yeah and then um, how did that unfold then did you come back to Liverpool like you know did, where did the, you know your current job where did that all come into it well the, the, the price offshore like the oil price was dropping and things like that mate and obviously I kept I kept my job I had my job but there was work when I come home yeah with the company I work for now so obviously I took the, took the work because I was sure that I had nothing going on and it's just unfolded from there mm. and I've, I think again getting to the position I'm, I'm at now I sort of manifested that yeah. being able to be at home yeah. With my kids earning the money I'm earning. Yeah. Which is a good job. Yeah. Um, and it's providing a great life for me. And yeah. if you if you'd have given me this life five years ago, I'd have bit your hand off. Yeah. It was a dream. Yeah. So where I am now, mate. But you know, it doesn't come without its struggles. Of course. Um, all, all this work. Yeah. And you know, it's it's called the work for a reason. Yeah. 
you know, which it's, it's it's not all sunshine and rainbows no. and unicorns, mate. Which people no. seem to think it is sometimes. Yeah. You know, it takes a brave man to. Because you're going into the dark nights yeah. of the soul, aren't you? Know what I mean? You're taking a look at your shadow once yeah. and for all. We're a mixture of light and dark, but you're really getting to see your darkness. Yeah. You know, and and you're also integrating these these fragmented parts of your psyche. You know, initiating. And and but also giving yourself permission to cry to yeah. release shame. I think I think men get a rough end of the stick. You know what I mean? It's like you know, boys don't cry. Mm. You know, you you, you got to make you got to be tough. You got to step up. And and would at the end of the day, we're just emotional beings. You know what I mean? But from a very early age, it's like you can't you can't express your emotions as a man. But then it comes out as anger. You yeah. know what I mean? We've yeah. got all this. You know, we're not allowed to express anger, or we're not allowed to speak our truth, or we're not allowed to be emotional. So all of a sudden, it's like suppress, 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 suppress. And all of a sudden, bang! You just end up blowing up yeah. somewhere down yeah. the line, and it's rage, then, yeah. isn't it? You know what I mean? And it, you know, and then you end up doing things unconscious, and it's it's madness, isn't yeah. it? You know. Yeah. Um, okay, let's bring Johnny into the conversation. So, Mister Hunter, thank you for being here. <laughs> you know, I um. I wanted to really uh, have you on, on 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 the podcast today because I'm 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 also I've got to know you over the last eighteen months, and you've become one of my closest allies, and I'm and I'm loving your journey and watching your journey as I know everybody else is, um, just mature all the time. You know what I mean? And mm. I know when I first met you, I only had to take one look at you, and I always tell this story that this little gold ring on your on your finger. And, you know, you walked in with this long hair and I thought, yeah, this fella's a bit of me, you know what I mean? <laughs> I like this fella. I just knew you were new, you were new, completely unique. And then as we got to know each other, it's been an incredible journey, hasn't mm. it? Of not just brothers, brotherhood and but friendship. So, you know, listening to the lads here and how's it been for you then, you know, growing up in Liverpool, stepping up into what it means to become a man. I know you lived away, you know, you you, you done mm. a, worked in London a lot and you, you went to uni elsewhere so lean into that let's let's listen to you know what you've got to say about your life yeah it's quite interesting actually listening to paul and jimmy because i had similar upbringings i was around violence i was around drugs but i guess from just a really young age i was looking at like these types of behaviors and i just didn't get it mm. i was just like i don't get this it doesn't feel right mm. and there was probably a lack of role models like elder role models in my mm. life but the place where I did get role models from were like movies like Gladiator yeah. and Lord of the Rings. I'd seen men in these movies and although they're like dramatizations and yeah. they're a character, they're not actually real men. There's something it's behind It's a symbology, them. isn't there? There's principles behind yeah. them. Like there's principles behind Aragorn, there's principles behind Boromir. And like as a young kid, I was looking up to like these kinds of characters I'd see on the screen. Mm. And then when I'd look into my life and the groups of young men I had around me, something wasn't adding up I was yeah. like these aren't the behaviours of of men so a penny dropped for me quite early when I was young and it kind of led me inwards to be curious about what it is to be a man Yeah. but with that brought a lot of inward anger as well because I felt like I was isolated I was around groups of people I yeah. didn't really relate to I was like where's my tribe people don't understand you as well Judy you know what I mean you just don't feel understood and it can be a, a, a lonely journey can't it yeah definitely a very lonely journey and I'm an only child come from an only child family and I just remember getting dead curious about what does it mean to be a man like where is my tribe like can, can I find these types of people that I look up to and how do I mould myself into be this type of man and just led me on a long journey really I went Went through the typical journey of school, college, university, got a job in London, came back home and all along that process I was just thinking like, all right, what's it mean to be a man? How can I be a man? And probably one of the biggest points for me was when I was in university, I found Wim Hof, mm. just researching online, that inward curiosity. I'd be yeah. sitting there on a laptop a Friday night, didn't really want to go out boozing and cracking on like it wasn't yeah. my scene. I was just like... I'd done a lot of that in Liverpool when I turned 18, just before I'd left for uni. I'd done all yeah. the drinking, been out partying and I was tired of it. Yeah. I got to uni and I must have been like the most <clears throat> reverse university student ever. I got <laughs> there, I was like knackered. I was like, friggin' hell, I'm not having a drink here. I'm I'm fucking, I'm done. I need to find something bigger. Yeah. Something bigger than this party and lifestyle. Yeah. And I just got curious. I was nice. on the laptop every Friday night, found Wim Hof, started doing Wim Hof, doing cold showers, just led me on a beautiful journey really mm. and ultimately led me back to Liverpool and back to meeting you mm. at the start of the pandemic really yeah 
because you know there was like because you're a marketing guru, aren't you? You know what I mean? You know, you're into like the, the sort of digital side of things, you know what I mean? How did that then weave into your life? You know what I mean? You know, this, this, like, because you, you're a creator, aren't you? Mm. You know what I mean? This curiosity is also like, it's a, it's a, it's a big gift of yours because you've become like a, a creator, a designer. You know what I mean? You've got incredible credentials with, you know, how you weave your gifts into other people's lives and holding space. Where did all that start then? How did that unfold? The creativity probably started when I was very young, really, being an only child, like, and not really having brothers or sisters around me. It was, it was just me and, like, a pencil mm. and a pad, you know what I mean? And mm. just learn to get creative and kind of make me own fun, really. Yeah. Just had this wild imagination all the mm. time. And I was either, like, play fighting with myself or I'd be, like, writing down little stories and drawing and just naturally evolved from there. I never let that side of myself go. It was always being creative, drawing, learning new things. I loved to read as a kid. I'd go mm. on holiday and because I didn't really have anyone to play with, I'd be there with my head and books on holiday. Like, yeah. my mum and dad would be, like, sitting by the pool and would be like, are you reading a book again? And I'd just be like that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, book, book. <laughs> and just kept building on that creativity, really. Just become curious. Mm. And I just love learning. Mm, what like, did you study in uni? Study graphic design at uni. Yeah. And I kind of studied that because i like the aspect of like communicating with people like yeah. you'd have to learn how to take an image or a piece of typography and you've got to make it communicate something to other people so mm. as i was developing this curiosity i was kind of looking like how to communicate with other people yeah and it just transpired that i ended up working on a lot of community-based stuff while i was at university mm. i actually put together a workshop for refugees and they came in and we had some people in our university course come together and we taught like refugees how to do like little printmaking techniques. Wow. Like, and I was always starving for like that group and that community yeah. doing wholesome activities yeah. really. And I kind of like stepped into a little bit of a leadership role in uni and just initiated that and thought, mm. well, if I can't find it, I'm going to make it happen. Nice. And kind of grew into that. And it was just, yeah, lovely, lovely journey of being yeah. creative and, having the opportunity, the blessing of being in university. Like, I know how much of a blessing that is. Not a lot of young men in Liverpool get yeah. to go to university. They get caught up in other things. It's not, it's very expensive as well. Yeah. Like, if I didn't have a lovely family to support me, yeah, probably wouldn't have been there. So I understand what a blessing it was mm. to be there and keep channeling my creativity mm. and keep letting it gr grow and flourish, really. Yeah, and then obviously then you were in London, you came back to Liverpool. That was, how long was you in Liverpool before we met then? What, what was? I was probably back about two years from yeah. university. I'd, yeah. I'd gone to London and I'd come back because I'd had a death in the family. I'd lost my granddad. And yeah. I kind of just lost myself for a long bit. Like mm. routine fell away. All the things I love doing, creativity, mm. long nights, sitting up on the laptop, doing stupid stuff. Mm. And all my great habits just fell away and, just kind of got lost in yeah. you know who I was for a year or yeah. two. And I think a lot of people do that when they get out of uni. They just fucking they get lost if they don't go straight yeah. into a job. They're like, I've I've climbed the peak, I've got to the top of the mountain, and you're the king of the world for a day. Yeah. And then the next day your graduation's over. It's like Jesus Christ, what now? Yeah. If you haven't got, got a to job get in the real them. world, yeah. yeah. What, what are, you know? How can a disciple a set of values that maybe don't even know what a value anymore? And because it's almost like uni, it, uni's a purpose in itself, in it. And mm. uni finishes like, fucking hell, oh bloody hell, what do we do now? You know what I mean? Mm. You know, and obviously the natural progression is to either go and work for a company or set something mm. up yourself. You know what I mean? And I know you're a freelancer, aren't you? Yeah. Um. So yeah, come back to Liverpool, death in the family, and then you know, fast forward that you know we met. Mm. Um. And that was uh, that was what that was March 2020, wasn't it? Ma yeah. yeah, about the March 2020. So there was a lot going on. With, like the pandemic was just starting to get, you know, it was just starting to get going as the first, mm. the first lockdown hit. Um, but you know, we we formed a really beautiful relationship, and mm. within the within that time, we just started doing a lot of work around, you know, the Martin Bone Institute. Obviously, there was stuff going on with the, with, you know, with the cold water. Uh, stuff at, at Crosby, yeah. and then we were just you were just leaning into all matters related, weren't we? The fellowship, you know, there's a few parties here and there. Um, <laughs> how's it then been for you personally? You know, being in that dynamic, you know. Oh God, it's been like a breath of fresh air. Like I've said it to you a few times when we've had conversations. It was like I'd finally found a place where I could relate. Mm. Finally found a place where I could speak 
with truth. Mm. Finally found a place where I could just like settle into myself yeah. and fucking relax. Express your weirdness as well. Yeah, be as quirky as you want yeah. to be and not have to worry about any jibes coming your way. Yeah. It was just a real safe yeah. community. Not much judgment is there really, and especially with the people we float with, some really mm. beautiful people, isn't it, you know? And what comes with that as well, when you're in a safe group of people, your authenticity shows. Yeah. You start being more and more authentic. It's shining. You, you find part of yourself that you forgot even existed. Yeah, yeah. It's a lovely space, isn't it? Oh, beautiful. And that's, you know, obviously led you on a journey of not just doing work with me, but, you you know, you've done work with other people as well, haven't you? And now, mm. you know, you, you're a big part of the Member Out Masks team. You know, and I remember introducing you to Craig and, and and again, it's just being in them circles of like, actually, you know, wow, I'm just with some boss fellas here. Mm. You know what I mean? Men who've done work on themselves, men who are just, you know, who've lived a life, you know, everyone's got their own experiences. <coughs> it's not just the men who are facilitating, but it's also the men who are coming on the retreats, aren't they? Yeah. You know, so, and I know you've had the opportunity to do the retreat yourself. Mm -hmm. How was that for you? The retreat was intense. Mm. It's a lot of deep work. Yeah. Especially, I've only been on the journey of working on myself for a short period of time. It was, felt like I was throwing myself in at the deep end. Yeah. But I just knew that going through them five days would put me in a really good place for my future. Yeah. So I dived right in and, yeah, it was a, it was tough. Like, a lot of things come up for me. Like, mm. stuff that I didn't really think I had wrong with me. Mm. Like, I thought I'm never an angry person, me. Like I'm just Mr. Nice Guy all the time. And mm. it's that actual education from people like Craig White and yourself. Yeah. And you actually learn about where your anger goes because we all have it. Yeah. It's going somewhere. Yeah. It's either inwards or it's going outwards. Yeah. And as a young man, I probably didn't really understand that. I wasn't educated mm. enough because we don't get taught it. Yeah. It doesn't get taught in schools. Yeah. And is that even that when you're saying Mr. Nice Guy, you know what I mean? That's a mask, innit? Yeah. Put that Mr. Nice Guy mask on, you know what I mean? When really we're suffering inside, we're dead angry, but then, we're, you know, we're, we're almost like showing the world, oh, I'm fine, I'm, you know, and mm. Mr. Nice Guy mask. And, and it's because we haven't got a, 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 a safe outlet or a container to, to speak about this stuff or to release anger. Mm. You know what I mean? Obviously, you know, having a container to release anger. I mean, I, I was talking about this the other day, but a lot of people release anger on the roads. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like the roads are a container for people to release anger because they're not releasing it anywhere else, mm. anywhere else. So like, you know, the, the stuff's going on at home for people or they're not working through any of this stuff. Next minute they're on the roads and like, and I mean, there's demons out there, isn't there, off the roads, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know, and they call it road rage though, isn't yeah, it? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And it becomes, a, it becomes a place for people to purge, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and but it's, it's um, it's it's not the way, you no. know what I mean. It's you know, and, and so we we we've got to find these outlets, haven't mm. we? You know what I mean. It's nothing wrong with anger. It's how we channel it, you know what I mean. It's where we project it, you know, which which really counts. And we we all sit here now, you know, all being on retreats, all doing, all continuing to step up into ourselves and and to show up uh, on a daily basis because they never we never never stops, does it? You know what I mean. There's mm. no anyone who says I've done work on myself now. I'm done. You know, <laughs> you know, you're just kidding yourself. You know what I mean? It's a, it's. A, I like to use the term maintenance. You know what I mean? You know, sometimes you feel like you're really getting in the trenches, you're doing the work, but then you sort of get into the light a bit. Then do, don't you know what I mean? And you think, wow, I've worked through a lot of you, mm. and I'm sustaining it. Um, but I feel like I'm able to maintain this now, and and I'm in the light. I'm heading towards the light instead of like I'm on in the darkness. I'm heading towards the light. Um, I feel like okay, it feels a bit lighter in my life now. And I'm still heading towards the light, but I'm but I've got that intention to to continue, you know, doing work. So you know, talking about memory out masks, was you same? You were on the same uh, retreat, no? No, no, no. yeah, was it, Jim? Yeah, yeah. So Paul, I was a few memory out masks. You know, what was the decision to go on that? <sighs> well, to be honest, mate, I dived into the work with yourself yeah. um, after really, really struggling to come to, to terms with the death of my dad. Yeah, um, so I was sort of seeking. I knew that I wanted to be better. I knew that I needed to address my me, me own mental health issues. Yeah. Um, so I think I messaged it in November and I got on on the march or something, mate. Yeah. How busy you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, got on in the march, mate, and then that just completely like started to change things yeah. and just woke me up yeah. to um, to my own power that mm. I hold within myself. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that you stop giving your power away to everyone else. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, stop blaming the world blaming as well the world for your, for for your issues. Stop blaming, yeah. you, you know, you might be blaming your parents. Yeah. You know, but, but they didn't know through mm. their level of, of awareness. Of course. You know, themselves. So, yeah. you know, that's helped me to forgive and, and accept yeah. um, things that I, I, I was uh, resentful against. Um, obviously, then dived into the level two. Yeah. Um, 
got Carly into the level too. Yeah. You know, um, she's been on a massive journey as well. Carly has huge, you know? huge journey, mate. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even from that, then my kids were involved and stuff. Yeah. You know, you've met my kids and you are all familiar with my kids. Mm. So um, then I've done the level three. Yeah. So I'm, I'm at the type of man I am, mate. I'm all in. Yeah. I'm all in. You know, you're getting the best of me and I will let's give you go everything I've got. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just, yeah, let's do it. Um, and then you obviously told me about Memory on Masks. And I was like, yeah, that's a bit of me. That's a progression as well, wasn't it, for the work? Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of work and a lot of things came up. Yeah. Um, I was a bit nervous before it. Yeah. Um, I didn't know what to expect. And I got there, mate, and it was it was pretty daunting, mate. I think my first year, I pretty much broke down. Yeah. Um, a lot came out. Um, but then a lot of my own insecurities come up within the circles. Yeah. Pattern, um, because you listen to other people's stories. Yeah. And I sort of started invalidating myself mm. in the circle. Like, oh, they've been through that. But mm. I've, that, what I've been through is not, not as bad. Yeah. So I felt like like I, sh- I shouldn't be as upset as I was. Yeah. But I got home and from the receipt and I, I didn't realise the importance of it. Mm. Um, probably till a couple of months. Yeah. Because I, I, I probably it's a big had a integration bit, process, yeah, isn't I'm, it? I was on the I message you made, didn't I? I was on the phone yeah. to you, you know, that I'm having yeah. a bit of a wobble here. Yeah. Um, because it brought so so many things up, so much of my shadow. Yeah. Um, so um, so many little elements of my life were just coming up. Yeah. And it was continuous, and I just you know I was struggling, but um, you know you give me a few little techniques, yeah. and you know you were always on the end of the phone yeah. for me. So and there's other men in your circles as well now, isn't he? Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know, I know that you're meeting Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I've met some great men like Jimmy and Johnny, and you know there's, yeah. there's other people in our Loads circle. Others, We've got yeah. Jake and yeah. got our own little circle. You know the boys yeah. in the winners circle, That's mate. Right. That I reach out to and yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I had a conversation on the last day, mate, with, with Ben Bidwell, you know, with Member Out Mass, and he sort of, you know, he helped me a lot, mate. And mm. the conversation we had on King Day, yeah, I'd say was was probably the most important moment of my life. Yeah. From where my life is now going to where it was going. Yeah. You know, when you wouldn't think it's just one little conversation, yeah. one little seed. Changed the course. Just changed can. the course of my life. It's changed exactly, you know, just changed everything mm. from where I was going. And, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, mate. And... I can't obviously, I can't thank you enough and Craig enough and the team enough mm. for everything that went into that. You know what mm. I mean? It was just unbelievable, mate. The process, like, I, isn't it? To, yeah, to look back on it yeah. now for where it was. Yeah. If I look back to last September. Because it's only when you huge. look back, isn't it? Yeah. So you're know, you you're in this place now, we mm. all sit here. And then you, it's only when you look back and you go, bloody hell. Wow. Because that, 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 you can only measure your life when you look back. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, the future's uncertain. You know, we might have an aspiration to go somewhere. And it's great when you know maybe you, you, what is it what your priorities are, and then you've got a map to head in that direction, and and you, you're okay with that, like uncertainty as yeah. well. But it's when you, you you look back now and you think, wow, look where I am now, and then you know it's like when you get them little. I mean, even whether you're on Facebook or not, you know you get them little photos on Facebook, don't you? Like yeah. it shows your photos are like 2017, yeah. and you're like, oh, different person, yeah. different yeah. person. Know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like that's that. not me. That. That's not me. Nah, it's not me. That. You know what I mean? Following on from that, don't make like you saw the the amount of people that are like you've changed. Like or like you know what's up with him? Yeah. That like say you know it's at trigger certain people yeah. think I'm going mad. Yeah. Mm. And my old boxing coach said, "What's up with you? Yeah. Putting, that up, putting that up on Instagram. Yeah. I'm like, not. I'm, I'm fine, mate. I'm flying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Feel good. People I'm in can't a good handle place. change. You know yeah. what I mean? You know people get so used to certainty <laughs> and they get so used to uh, you know and they expect the certain that you're going to behave a certain way. And so when you are actually like showing up in your life and there is, a, there's a, I mean, there's a natural timeline anyway for us to change. But when we do this work, it's almost like we're shedding a bit of skin, aren't we? Mm. And we can shed skin a bit quicker mm. than others. Um, and and it's and, and it's the people around you that sometimes some people welcome it, but equally some people don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and, and th- then you get branded the fool. You know what I mean? Or you're, you're the nutter now. Or you're the hippie now. You know what I mean? You're, yeah. in that, you're in the cult now. It's like, no, I'm not in the cult. I've actually stepped out of the cult. I've stepped out of that culture, that collective narrative that everyone's in. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've, I've now I'm now got some self-awareness. I'm now taking a look in the mirror. Now taking responsibility. Okay, so as you said, it's, it's this is where the work begins. You know what I mean? Seeking other men. You know, investing in yourself. Yeah. You know, it's a big thing. I always say it's like you, you've invested in yourself. You haven't just done work with myself, but you haven't, you know, Craig White, men, uh, member out masks. But I know you've, you know, you've, you've done some stuff with the mind PT, and so you know, actually investing yeah. in you. Um, but the, 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 you, you get paid, don't you? Yeah. you know what I mean, because you're educating yourself. Yeah. 
you, you, you're receiving this information, but then you're applying it to your yeah. own life situations. Yeah. And that on a daily basis causes a, a, a knock on effect of, of a natural organic shift, doesn't yeah. it? A natural change. Um, so, you know, leaning back, you come off from memory out masks. So where does Pac mentality come into it then? What, what's, the, what, what's, what's the gig there? Well, the seed got planted sort of with, um, with Ben. Yeah. As well, mate. He sort of said, you know, I was talking about, I talked about Pact, mate, three or four years ago, but it was talked of in terms of a property company. Yeah, really, so, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So the name was made, you know, it was, it yeah. was stamped. This is what it was, you know what I mean? Paul yeah. Aiden, Carly Thomas, which is, you know, which is my family. Um, but then obviously Ben was like, well, why don't you share your story? And, you know, that's that's your gift. Mm. You know, share your story and, and hold space for other men, maybe. You know, yeah. you're good enough to do it. Yeah. And I was like... Nah, I'm not good enough. Mm. And like the, the ego was kicking in, you know. Yeah. Like, I a lot of people got to think of me or yeah. a bit of self doubt. Yeah, a lot yeah. of self doubt was popping in me. And I sat with it for a little bit. And I think it comes to when was I seeing you, mate, in January, I think. And we just, you know, I'd, I'd put a bit together. It's like, yeah. this, this is what I want. Yeah. You know, pack, pack mentality's out. Yeah. I want a whole space for men. Yeah. And what does um, it stand for? Uh, power, awareness, compassion, and transformation. Lovely. Um, but the, also the work that I do, mate is I take men on a six week journey. Yeah. Um we dive deep into the male psyche. Yeah. Um throughout the whole um process, you know, we're sharing. Yeah. Um we're going into the uncomfortable, we're going into the yeah. unknown and you know we're doing initiation and ritual processes. Yeah. Throughout every single week. Yeah. You will be initiated. So you're sort of letting go of that boy mentality. Yeah. And you're really taking a deep look in the mirror at yourself. Yeah. And who you are as a man and what you know. Yeah. What it means to be a man, who showed you how to be Absolutely, a man. Absolutely, yeah. So we, we, we're diving into so all it's that. It's a mixture mate. of education, but direct experience but, as yeah. well. That's a unique blend, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's, it's got everything, mate. And obviously I've, I've done my first course, which started, um, that was in April. So that's finished now, but the feedback I've had off that has been yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, the transformation of seeing the lads yeah. um, from week one to week six. Massive, it's, it's, it's just huge, mate. You yeah. know, you've got men crying. You know, yeah. even second and being able to hold that space for men to cry and yeah. to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. to share their stories and yeah. to feel held and to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Um and for me to feel safe and, yeah. and held as well at the same time. It's it's healing for me. Yeah. Um, so it's a journey just for you as much as it is for everyone exactly, else, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Every single every single time yeah. I go, you know, I obviously Johnny's a part of one of them, <clears> you know. Yeah. Um it's it's you know it's amazing and I'm I'm changing it all the time. Yeah. I'm trying to obviously it's gonna take a couple of times to, yeah. to get it right, but yeah. I think it'll organically just keep growing and growing Absolutely. and growing, mate. But um, you know, I have had people reaching out to me, um, like certain organizations reaching out to mm. me, like nice. the older hate trauma team. Mm. Um Alan Walsh from Real Men Don't Carry Knives. Yeah. Um, they do a lot of work with gang culture, obviously, with, yeah. with a lot of men, you know, going on in, in, in this city, mate. The gang violence yeah. is um it's, you know, it's it's terrible. Um, and he came in and sat in on one of my sessions and Hush. he wants to pioneer this work and Brilliant. get this rolled out in this city and, yeah. you know, let's get it to the kids. Brilliant. Let's get it to 14, 16-year-olds yeah. and, you know, let's see what they think Because it's it. a universal model, isn't yeah. it, what you're teaching, you know, it, 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 you, you've drawn upon not just your own direct experience, but you've drawn upon, you know, um, all the information that you've gathered, you know, whether that's through the courses you've sat on or whether that's through your own direct experience, all the books you've read. Yeah. And then you've put this course together and you're like, actually, what I'm teaching you is universal. It yeah. works right across the board, whether you're 15 years of age or whether you're 50 years of age, you know, come and lean into this stuff. Yeah. And and you can't not grow from you the experience, grow, can mate. you? And it, I think, you know, it comes from life experience, man. Yeah. Living with a father who's struggled and I can relate to so many scouts yeah. lads. Yeah. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's real. Yeah. Um, I can relate to it on every level of certain scenarios you've been through within yeah. your life. Um, you know, I always sort of say I wouldn't go to a boxing coach personally who's never boxed. Yeah, of course. So they're coming to a man who's yeah. probably lived a certain life that they've lived, who's yeah. seen a lot of what they've seen and who will not judge them yeah. for the choices that they've made as young men or as yeah. men. Yeah, because I think, you know, just naturally being in a city... In Liverpool, you know what I mean? It's it's a hard place, isn't yeah. it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, you, you you do have to wear some masks, don't you? you know, mm -hmm. and there's, there's 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 a warrior energy that you have to adopt from a very yeah. early age. And and you know, sometimes that warrior energy, I think, you know, we, we there's all like now these like mini cultures in Liverpool, isn't it? You know what I mean? So gangs and I mean there's always been a gang culture for, for many, many years. But you know, it's it, it's it's gone from like this hunter gatherer, this tribal, this one community to like you know, small mini tribes, you know what I mean, in different family units. And then there's like, obviously, this father separation and then there's just this identity losses in there, you know yeah. what I mean? 
and 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 all these like little um mini cults that are going on in Liverpool and everyone's just competing with each other. Mm. You know what I mean? So there's no you know just recently on on one of the last retreats we've we've started talking about the fifth art archetype which is brotherhood. You know what I mean? And there's there's just this sense of because everyone's trying to prove some themselves because of a lack of initiation and then uh, there's all this like um competition and comparing and what comes with that is like is is violence you know what i mean and yeah. and and, a, and and like a, a lack of like um a lack of compassion towards men do you know what i mean so we're all killing each other rather than actually fucking Wait, helping each other yeah. you know what i mean and yeah. and and it, it's gone from like this sort of we us culture to me you know what i mean yeah. and, and it's almost like this individual man on the streets and who's it, it, it just you know starving for for connection but is 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 actually you know so warped and twisted in the minds, you know that they're just out there to, for themselves. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And it's it's very sad. I feel like we're also missing this lack of connection to nature. I know you know we can lean back into this with Jimmy because nature's a teacher of ours, isn't it, Jimmy? You know what I mean? And we've just been domesticated nowadays. You know we're we're we're, 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 we're on the phones all the time. You know what I mean? We're in the head. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're living in boxes, we're working in boxes, you know, we're, you know, we've just got, I mean, living in the city and I mean, we've got some great parks here, mm. but we're missing this connection to nature because yeah. it's, it, it is our primal teacher, isn't it? You know what I mean? So you've, you've got a massive connection to cold water. We know this. So cold water community, how did this unfold and where was it inspired from? Um, so it's, it happened quickly. Um, snowballed and it, but it, it happened. You obviously was a part of it. The start wasn't you, Johnny, and it was quite organic. Um, I was doing a, a charity challenge for sh a, a charity called Sean's Place, which is a men's mental health charity, which is an, an amazing place. They've like got just doing fantastic stuff for them for the men in the city. Um, and for me, I was like looking for the right place and it just popped up. I thought I wanted to do, I wanted to do this. I'm, I'm massively, I've been into Wim, Wim Hof for years. And um, so I chose to do it for Sean's place. And it was a first part of it was shaving my head, obviously, which is obviously seen because I had hair down there. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second part was on New Year's Day. Um, I was going to be climbing Scarfell Pike in just my shorts. Mm. So obviously that was going to be a feat in itself because it was going to be something like minus yeah, something ridiculous at the top. Yeah. yeah. Like nipples dropping off material. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so then, uh, but then obviously lockdown happened literally mm. just, just on it. And um, obviously for, um, for doing it with for someone and officially for a charity, we wouldn't want to shine any bad, bad yeah. light on that. So we had to put that on hold. But throughout that process, I was training for it heavily. Like I was going into ice lakes that were like that thick yeah. and like breaking through it, getting in it and doing little pieces. You've piece obviously seen a little piece of camera for the charity because it was yeah. putting, first time I was putting myself out there, yeah. but obviously to raise money. And we raised like, I think it was like two grand in two weeks or yeah. something. Um, which we, which we were made up with. We had the target and then just upped it. And then we're not, we've now restarting it again. Um, but throughout that process um, of sort of putting it out there, getting into the ice lakes, talking about cold water, I was just getting inundated with people just messaging me and people who weren't, like who didn't even know yeah. me on my Instagram. Can I come like, and join you? Yeah, it was because it was getting shared about because of the charity. Um, people were like, oh, can I come out with you? Can I come out with you? And then it was like, I started just taking people out one-to-one one, one one sort of thing. And then next minute, it was just like, it become that much where people started to then give me war and peace. Yeah. Because obviously throughout the, <laughs> talking about the charity, I spoke about my experience yeah. and when I shaved my head, I had a quite like honest conversation with the guy shaved me head and it was just a really nice, yeah. nice little video. And throughout that then what happened is it, it grew and it grew and I thought, I'm going to have to like do something with this. So that's where it was sort of, sort of okay, I'm going to sit, I put it out there on my Instagram, should, should I set up some sort of group that we can meet? Um, and then with that, then it had to be done properly because of the restrictions yeah. and didn't want to sort of, because of the nature of what it was where we were, where it sort of, I was going to be going out there with getting vulnerable people into the cold water, uh, in the breath work, getting them into nature. I didn't want to sort of any unwanted sort of, complications yeah. from police from the council, whatever whatever so we set it up as a proper company um dealing doing with human mental health activities yeah um and then first first one was about 10 
And then it just literally within a few weeks became like I was having to do three sessions in yeah. t- two hours across a Saturday. And yeah. then it was and then it became the Sunday. And then it was like over a hundred people just on a weekend, yeah. which then spiraled into sort of it became at the moment it's got like 300 people in separate groups yeah. uh, because I've had to sort of do that as well. The community aspect of it's brilliant, everyone together. Yeah. But if you're looking at your phone and you walk away for an hour and there's 600 messages, mm. that's not healthy. Yeah. And then people are then sucked into, and for me, I was like, I, I there's people saying they were overwhelmed with that. And yeah. obviously there's people who, who were suffering from anxiety, people mm. who were suffering from all sorts of different things. So it was like I moved over to Telegram. They capped it off at a hundred per per group, yeah. And then the groups are just like a hundred, hundred, hundred now, yeah. And then we've got a private Facebook group with about five hundred people in. Wow. Um. So that's the community aspect of it. Yeah. Um. The actual sessions themselves, I don't even like calling them sessions because that puts like that yeah. official. It's I call it, I call them gatherings, yeah. Because mm. we we are we're just gathering, we're yeah. coming together. Um. And it was just started off initially with just the, obviously the Wim Hof breath work, which yeah. has done massive, huge things for me. Um, I think what was a massive thing of sort of my driving force and my turn to the breath work and my turn to the cold water was obviously you've have all seen the video of me breaking my leg last last yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually done me level three in a hospital bed on morphine yeah. on a video call. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you made a couple of sessions in the end. I was just yeah. like that, wasn't I? Like, <laughs> but um, but yeah. Anyway, I, I, what I done was I, br- I literally broke my ankle. It yeah. was, it was cut a long story short. They said it was six to twelve months. Yeah. Even, um, possibly may, may never be the same again. Um, and with that, I was about two, two, three months just before After fire the fire service. service yeah. Me medical, I had to pass a, a treadmill run. Yeah. And the, the doctors were like. You, you're gonna it's have a to touch and go. This do, no, they were basically no, not even touch really? and go. They were saying to me, "You're gonna have to like basically this is dream, your dream over wow. sort of thing," um, and it, it got me. Meant me mentality dropped. I think I come out of the hospital. I had um, the operation. I had plates and rods put into my ankle, um, and I was on when I first come out the, the, the drugs that they gave me, um, codeine and and whatnot, and I, I had a drop, and and I recognised what was happening. I was like, no. No. So I watched every single thing of Joe Dispenza mm. like that you can imagine. And I, I obviously through how he repaired it, yeah. he was told he'd never walk again and yeah. blah, blah. So I was meditating and um, doing healing meditations like mm. three hours a day, hour, hour, hour. Mm. Wim off breath work for like half an hour at a time. Yeah, nice. Literally just concentrating on that. Mm. Um, and then uh, six weeks later, uh, got cut out and then I was straight into cold water straight yeah. into it. it was prime time it was December yeah it was like, like I didn't even need ice baths because I, I was going into Carmel Dam and it was <laughs> absolutely yeah. freezing how cold's the water there like that was sort of like three degrees is it four degrees like it, it was lower. freezing it, it was yeah. lower it was lower yeah. you can get cold water shock on tw- in 12 degrees yeah um, so that was sort of how I fell massively fell in love with it because yeah. literally you can't just dive into cold water like oh no at three degrees if you've never been into no, it have you know what I mean no, there's no. a whole process no, isn't it no, no. And there was a, a an acclimatization we'd put that out there that sort yeah. of um a morning routine as as you have with yourself and, yeah. and mark scanner was a sort of similarity of yeah. sort of incorporating Start getting cold breath showers, work, cold showers yeah. acclimatizing yeah um, and then there were people who would come and it, sort of it, 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 there's the aspect of people who've got health conditions asthma heart yeah. conditions about gauging all of that and looking yeah. into that deeper um but yeah so how i fell in love with it was through that process of the injury mm. and then it literally saved my whole career yeah because i was gonna it was gonna be career over yeah and then basically cut me out the cut me out the cast and it was like you're gonna go now go into a boot for six weeks and i was like well i've got my medical and four that's not happening mm. so i was literally breath work ice water every single day and i was on a treadmill within a week wow um, and i should they said that like I'll, I'll, I'll only start being able to learn to walk again mm. after about two weeks mm. um and then I, I got booked in for one physio session which was due in for like six months worth of physio and he basically got it, had one session with him and he was just like, Good in my 20 either. years, I've never seen anyone with this mobility wow. being able to do, do what you're doing. So quick. And I was like, it's because obviously they're taught that as humans we're capable of, and this yeah. is what we're Wim off. This is where it leads into cold water communities. Like Wim off is like, we're taught we're capable of this when we're actually capable of, sort of, of this. Yeah, this yeah. Do you know mm. what I mean? And f- so throughout that, then getting my life, like sort of my career of my, my dream back, um, as well as men without masks, it all just all sort of Fitted happened at the same in, time. And in January, yeah. bam, okay. Now started it off, done the sessions, uh, breath work, added the shares in, 
um, and it just grew massively, snowballed organically. Um, but most probably a bit too quick for me, and most yeah. probably for my own, um, my own ambition. Um, yeah. Because obviously, it's similar to to Johnny, I've got like a, a, a background in media, so I was filming it myself and doing the, the media myself and doing the Instagram, and then mm. it just went poof. Right off its head. Yeah, yeah, and it's still still gone off its head. Now it's, got, yeah. it's as it's grown, um, we've got people like so. I've obviously just saying same with the with the restrictions and trying not to have any un, unnecessary attention yeah uh, or any interruptions to the gatherings because yeah. that's the last thing i want because we have our police turning up a few times yeah um which has been deadly. and you're adhering to all of the the, the the regulations and rules and regulations are you know you're not breaking any rules are you, you know what i mean so what what's happened recently is because of how big it's gone uh, people have got wind of like times that we're meeting and people are just turning up yeah and then that's where then it's sort of um I, I've sort of this week took a step back and I said I'm going to have a couple a few weeks off yeah uh, I, we had a little conversation before I'm going to streamline me yeah um, because the, got the to take a few screws haven't you yeah. then the work that's happening set on set some them, boundaries yeah the work that's happening on them is that like the, it's it's magnet like I've had literally I talked to about a minimum of 100 people one to one yeah of like people saying it saved the relationship. It saved my life. It's, it's yeah. honestly that's what it's people are saying. Yeah. And I, I could never. I could. It's it for me. That's like. Yeah. There's no. There's no better feeling yeah. than that. I think you know what we're talking about here, and and it's something that we're familiar with. It in member out masks is, you you, the shares are incredible. You know what mm. I mean? And and giving people an opportunity to share. You know, the fact that there's that many people coming to, you know, to the cold water community is a measure of how much it's needed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know, yeah. we're not just in a pandemic mm. where people are, are afraid, you know, with what's going on. You know what I mean? Shall I take the vaccine? Shall I not take the vaccine? What's going on here? You know, I've got to wear a mask and I've, I've got to stay at home and I can't see my family. So there's there's all this added, added pressure and stress on to all, all, all most people's just sort of, normal mental state where mm. people are psychologically overthinking, worrying about the future, haven't really got a great relationship with trust or, or you know, or uncertainty. And so there's just this complete and utter added pressure. And, you know, f for you to bring this experience to Liverpool, which is, you know, it's almost been a lot of synchronicities, hasn't it? Yeah. But it's stuff that you absolutely love to do. You love cold water. Mm. You know, you love Wim Hof. You've been doing it for many years. You've had so much direct experience with it. And then these revelations of putting something together, it's it's magical. Mm. It's magical. And a lot of healing goes not just in the circles where, like, people are sharing, yeah. but in the water. You know what I mean? They're back oh. in nature. People get out of that cold water difference. It's like they're being baptised, isn't it? You know what I mean? You know, you get out the water difference from what you get in though especially when it's cold you know there's a there's just something that goes on isn't it you know what i mean so obviously you know a little bit more about the physiology yeah. of what goes on in the body let's talk to us about that so in terms of like the, the water itself for me it's for what it's done for me it's the it's the discipline side of it yeah so when i first went into the cold water it was it'll teach you how much of a wash you are mm. uh, it'll teach you it will <laughs> yeah. it does it teaches you Oh my god! Like literally, yeah. if I remember my first ice bath, I got in thirty seconds and I was screaming, yeah, yeah. screaming, yeah. and it bo. Oh. We dramatise, don't we? Nat? Yeah. You know, naturally, yeah, yeah. It brings you, about this courage you, to go. Your okay, mind, the, the monkey mind telling you you're yeah. gonna die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna die. Get me and out of this. It it's it's like too hard. Stre I like can't stress. do this. Yeah. But um, throughout <laughs> the process of um, like sort of, it's like your, your focus muscle. You know what I mean? Your brain. That that determination to push through that monkey mind telling you, yeah, you're you, you're not. Do you know what I mean? You're fighting that that like everyday life. The, the voices that are telling you, yeah, you're not good enough. Can't do this. You can't do this. You can't. Everyone's do that. So Everyone's you talking can, about yeah, this, so that, you, and the other. So if you can stand in an ice lake, or when you can stand mm -hmm. in, a, in an ice bath, or sit in an ice bath and fight that that that, that, that thing that's telling you, yeah, you, you can literally throughout, for me what I learned throughout, throughout the time, it's sort of massively massively improved my discipline yeah like in every which way shape or form yeah. because it's 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 just it's just like a muscle do you yeah. know what i mean and every time i was getting stronger and stronger and i was coming away from the things yeah. that i didn't it's want building to build character isn't it yeah 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 and then so that with the breath work um for me there's nothing more that connects your mind your body and your soul than the than the breath work yeah um the, the just it, it, and it, so the thing is, is that you can access it we're breathing now, do you know what I mean? You, yeah. breathe, you breathe from the moment you're born, we're breathing, breathe till the moment you die mm. and you can access it at any time. But what it is, is people don't realise that 
how much of a magnificent tool it is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just because we're, we're conditioned to shallow breathe. Yeah. As soon as you start, soon as you start to do deeper breathing and regulate the breath, mm. you're entering into the worlds of sort of physiology of like tapping yeah. into your autom automotive system. Yeah. Um, and it balances as well. So you'll have a moment of ba of balance. Homeostasis, within, yeah. Yeah, mm. where then you go into, for, for me, I've had my def defining moments from a breath work. Yeah. Uh, one in particular with the, the last one with Matt Gunn in mm. your place. And it was a, it was definitely some sort of like, I literally traveled through my whole body. Yeah. And then after it, it's sort of like everything that you were worried about just is, is gone and nothing yeah. else matters. It, you, you go home. Because it can put you in the body a lot, yeah. can't it? You yeah. know, we can get in the head a lot. We can be overthinking so much in our lives, worrying about things, you know, that don't really matter. Stressing on, you know, on on thinking about people are thinking of us, you know what I mean? And no one's really asked, really. No one's thinking of us. You know, we think so many people are judging us and yeah. we think we're going to be judged if we try new things. And, and you know, we, we, we can... And we're, we're almost trying to impress people. Like, actually, we don't even like, you know what I mean? So we put all these masks on. And when this, this you know, we get into the breath and this unique blend of, of not just the Wim Hof breathing, but the cold water and then bringing people together and having a share. I mean, they're like four incredible ingredients for, for transformation. Uh, do you know what I mean? You know, when someone can come along um, who's who've, who, who wants to be a part of some sort of community, yeah. who wants to share something about themselves that maybe they've never vocalized before just to release a bit of shame and also just wants to have an experience like most people nowadays they want to try something new but they don't know what it is and the cold water is just something it's so simple mm. but it's 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 and refreshing it's, isn't it because it's cleansing you know yeah. like we're made of water aren't we mm. and the body knows you know i think what, what i the relationship i've ever had around the cold water is that it's it wakes something primal inside of you doesn't it Cave you know man. what i mean Cave yeah woman it person. brings something out, doesn't it? And all, and I can all so talk about how it builds resilience in the yeah. body, doesn't it? You know, yeah. we've never been so comfortable in the West nowadays, mm -hmm. but actually we've never been so sick. You know what I mean? People are getting sick left, right, and centre. Yeah. You know, we are domesticated, um, and and but this comfort zone that people are in, but people are not just physically sick, but they're spiritually dead. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And and so when you get in into nature, especially like the cold water. It's, you know, it, it's building resilience within the body so we can fight off disease. Um, but also it awakens something primal within you, do you know what I mean? Something which, because we are nature, we are, you know, we are this naturalness. And and, and all of a sudden you, you seem to be then connecting to a lot more of, your, not just your divinity and the body, but you, your natural wisdom. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Called, for me, it's like I always say, it's, it's like, leading people to home. Yeah. You get to go on home. Yeah. And that's with the breath work. And so there's a sort of, there's a, a process that I do in the water as well. It's not like just go in, come out. Yeah. I sort of, especially when it was cold, I was like, right, okay, you're going to go under mm. three times. You're going to go under once and you come up. You're going to go under twice and you're going to come up and the third time I tell them, you're going to go under, you're going to feel uncomfortable and then you're going to go a bit longer than that. Yeah. And then you're going to rise up. Wow. But you're not going to jolt up. Yeah. Just... And then throughout that process, they're just like, and literally, it's like I see. It's 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 gonna sound mad, but I some of them when I see them, like men and women, yeah. like mice, and they yeah. come in really like don't want to share, yeah. don't want to do the dance, don't want to do this, don't do that. And then after like a, one, literally by the end of it, yeah, you just go. You can just see can energetically. See I can see it. Away. The, the face looks lighter. Yeah, the the the, the, the crying by the end of it, but she yeah. tears a joy. Yeah, it's just like wow what what has actually just happened yeah and for me that that like in just two hours you can you can and that sets change them someone's life yeah and yeah. but also as well as we both know it, it's, it's sort of starting and it, it, can, it can have an energetic shift yeah to make people aware of that like yeah you may have a little bit of a look after yourself for the yeah. next few, couple of days and if i can get in cold water and i go through that process I'm actually stronger than, than I think. Yeah. So then you're taking these attitudes into life going, you know what? There is a pandemic here, but I'm not going to be socially constructed. Yeah. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be afraid of like, of, of, of being unique and expressing my gifts mm. anymore. Or maybe going after that new idea or maybe being creative with, 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 with maybe meeting new people or whatever. So I think like you're taking people on this experience. It's like, wow, well, if I can do that. I can do anything, mm. you know what I mean? And you, you, it, it awakens people's potential, doesn't it? You yeah, know what I mean? It does. And, and that is like, I know as well as you do, and everybody else in this room, you know, Johnny being the cameraman and witnessing people's lives, Paul, you know, holding space for Pac-Mentality, is like, 
the best part of our job is to actually witness there and then a shift. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and sometimes it is only but a shift, isn't it? It's only but a moment that can that can change someone's life. It can change the direction of someone's you know experience. And and then there's a it's not just their experience, but then there's a ripple. You know what yeah, I mean? It, it ripples into their own family dynamics, you know, because they're the ones looking in the mirror. They're the ones taking responsibility. They're the ones stepping up, whether you're a man or a woman, yeah. you know, and, and all of a sudden, you know, there's, there's there's almost this like energetic experience moving through the city and we all know, we can all feel it. We can all see it. Yeah. You know, people stepping up left, right and centre, you know what yeah. I mean? And I honestly feel like Liverpool's a pioneer for it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we, 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 we love trying new things and we love taking risks. And, um, you know, we love being a little bit of a rebel as well, don't you know what I mean? So, you no, know, I'm not, not taking away maybe any other things that are going on in any other cities because I, I, I can't comment on that because I don't know too much. Mm. But there just seems to be a, these big movements here. Mm. You know, it's not just what we're doing, but there's other people, you know, obviously yeah. you've got Mark Scanlon, you know, you, you've got the likes of, you know, Luke Powell with Shredfast and, you know, you've got other guys with, you know, Power, you know, um, with their... Carl Webb. Car, you know, Callum, yeah. yeah. And then you've got Strata Radio and, you know, and, and you know, the stuff at um, Lost Lounge and, and there's just, and, and you know, anyone else I haven't mentioned, apologies if I haven't mentioned you, but there's, there's, there's so many people doing it. You know, obviously, you know, Matt Gunn and, and his partner, you know, um, Paula Gunn, you know, they do incredible work with like uh, Tom Harrison House and they do a lot of, you know, stuff with, with addictions and there's just people left, right and centre doing incredible work and, it's 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 really really exciting time I think and I uh, I just have to you know I honour what you guys are doing you know what I mean because it, it's not easy to hold space it's not easy because you're gonna get your trolls now and then you're gonna get your people judging you you know what I mean and and but you just it, it's it, but you can't deny then that, that them experiences where you're witnessing people shift and change outweighs any plan mm. pot who's gonna be judging you mm. you know what I mean you know because people are gonna be naturally pointing fingers. But it's like, wow, I've, if I just, if I change one person's life, just for me to see that shift in one mm -hmm. person in one moment on one morning, it's enough, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? So leaning back into Johnny, you know, because you're the man behind the camera a lot of the time, mm -hmm. Johnny, do you know what I mean? How's it been for you? You know, because you're almost like that. Like you're seeing it all from a different vantage point, aren't you? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? A different perspective. You're capturing it on the camera not just with the video footage, but with the photographs. And it's been a big part in how we we actually then show the world what we're up to, because mm. that inspires other people, doesn't it? You know, I know we inspire people from from all around the planet. And and it's, you know, we've got Stevie Ward there, who's in in, London, in Leeds, you know, diving into, you know, doing some cold water stuff mm. in Leeds. And, and we know he's, you know, a rugby player, captain of Leeds, you know, gone through a big process of, of, of um, of concussion but actually he's took him on a completely different journey hasn't it you know what i mean and how he feels like he's being treated as a man especially in the arena of sports you know and, and, and how now he can use his experiences to hold space for, mm. for for growth in other people in other people's lives so how's it been for you then behind a the camera and editing it and, and putting music towards it and you know and, and yeah yeah it's it's just an absolute blessing you know like to be a part of like so many different communities and it really goes back to what you say about the power of holding space for others. Like, where else do you get to witness people have them penny drop moments? Mm. Where else do you get to witness people actually open up and be so vulnerable? And to have someone there like myself who can capture that and communicate it to the wider world. Like, I call them moments of magic because yeah, yeah. they truly are. Like, I'm sitting there behind the camera. Everyone's just so deep in the process. And when you do see them, just have that moment where it's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the whole body language changes, the shoulders drop back, a big smile mm. erupts, mm. or tears flood out their eyes. Capture that emotion is incredible, isn't it? It's just real. It's just realness that yeah. you're capturing. And in a world of social media, there's a lot of fakeness. Yeah. There's a lot of masks. There's a lot of pretend. There's a lot of reputation that people have to uphold. This image of, oh, this is what I've got to be like. Yeah. And where I'm getting to be with my talents and skills behind the camera is in the realness of mm. human experience. Yeah. And over the past 12 months, like Witness and Paul start packed, Jimmy with the Cold Water community, all the work you're doing, and Men Without Masks, it's like, it's overwhelming for me sometimes. <laughs> Honest to God. Tear jerkers, fucking crying all the time. <laughs> I'm sitting there on a Friday looking through the footage and like, 
I get to relive it multiple times. Yeah. I get to relive them special moments. And, mm. Like, just touches me very deeply. Yeah. I feel very, very honoured to, like, know you all and mm. actually be a part of these communities. Very cinematic, isn't it? You know mm. what I mean? You know, and I think when you weave your magic and, you know, you're editing these videos and then you're putting some music over the top and it's, 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 it's giving people an experience, even on social media, thinking, wow, I can f that emotion's jumping out at me. You know what I mean? And, and, and this is in my own backyard. It's in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, right, it's on Crosby Beach. You know what I mean? It's, in, it's, mm -hmm. in, it's you know, it's it's in Paul's, Paul's house. Or yeah. I know you're working in a guru, don't you? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, He's been to my house, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Been on the pads a few um, times. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... I, I, and I think, you know, we sit here and we have to... We're blessed to have men like yourself with these gifts of being able to capture these moments and then and then yeah sh sh we show we're showing them to the world because it's what the world really wants to see isn't it you know what i mean that you know mm -hmm. the, as you said i think the word there was real you know what i mean because there is a lot of masks out there there are a lot, a lot of people you know trying to promote self-image where you know living a fake life you know what i mean mm -hmm. and deep down we're just starving for authenticity, aren't we? Yeah. We're definitely starving for authentic connections, you know what I mean? And certainly what we're doing here is like, you're bringing people together, but it feels authentic, doesn't it? You know mm. what I mean? There's no one's comparing, no one's competing, and you, we're now getting back to this sort of, not that I like to use the word tribal, but we're getting back to this, as you said, Jimmy, this gathering. People are gathering. There's a mm. commonality. People want to see each other do well. Um, and, and it's not just then yourself holding space or the water or the breath, but then it's the people, isn't it? Yeah, you know what I mean? You know, the community of people all with a sort of a common thread of, of, of actually, I'm here to do me. I'm here to look after my own welfare. But I'm actually here to, to to look after the welfare of other people. So we, we, you know, it goes from this sort of collective eye to we mm -hmm. and us, and we, and we move back into that spaces, yeah. and we know that all to be totally primal for us. You know what I mean? Um, okay, lovely conversation, by the way, gents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've really enjoyed. Yeah. It. You know, we're getting into yeah. like an hour and twenty five here, and so we, you know, we'll, we'll start wrapping it up because we could just keep going on and on and on. And I think you know, my intention here for anyone listening to these conversations is just to feel inspired you know what i mean just to be inspired you know whether you are a man listening to this conversation or whether you're a woman you know the, the, yeah we sit here as men um but we're also very in tune with our feminine side aren't we you know what i mean you know there's a side of us that there's a that there's a softness that there's a depth that we're all in tune with and we've all got some great female friends you know what i mean that you know that are doing some great work in and around the city um so you know i know you know carly's doing some ma major work massive work yeah. on herself and you know she's also you know professional boxing mate isn't yeah. she you know what i mean so yeah. she's doing some massive work there and you know there's, there's then all them other you know, like Claire Cockburns, you know, your Angela Thompsons, Love you know, it. yeah, mm -hmm. your, your Polly Ann's off, you know, they, 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 there's mm -hmm. just, there's women, you know, out there really like going for it and, and holding that space. Um, so, you know, and Diane Everton, you know, at Awake Studios and, you know, anyone else who, I, who have missed it, I do apologise. Oh, yeah, all that, you know. Laurie. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, Lauren, yeah. You know, the Wild the wild Warrior Women, you know what yeah, I mean? Doing yeah. some massive work. Um so yeah, anyone out there listening, you know, our intention is just to inspire, just to be ourselves, to be authentic. You know, this platform's all about just real people, real conversations. And so let's start wrapping it up then, guys. You know, so Paul, how do people get older? What what's the next step for you? You know, how, how do people get onto your, onto your courses and things? Um, you can follow me, mate, on Instagram at Pac Mentality. Nice. Um, also, there's a link for my website that Johnny sorted, mate. Nice. So I've got one that that's got further details on it. Yeah, lovely. Um, a little bit more information. About what it, what the course entails, the yeah. more I put on what it is, yeah. yeah, what it is, what What's the going on for if you what want to, to get expect involved. all yeah. that, yeah, yeah, lovely. Um, and obviously, you can just DM me, mate. You know, yeah. I'm available for to, to, to answer them back if you DM me if yeah. you want any information. Nice, um, I'll get back to them, you know. And I mean? then Carly's going to be holding some space for women, so it's a similar model, but just you yeah. know, yeah, it's following the same model, yeah, if you like, but obviously, it's going to be it's going to incorporate obviously the feminine yeah. archetypes yeah. Um, with her spin on it and from her life experience and Us. all the inner work she's done so brilliant she's done a rundown of like three weeks of it with me mate so yeah, it's, nice. you know, it's really good so I've liked to try and, news. try and have a little touch in there myself you know yeah, what I mean yeah it's like that could I come in uh, I'll, I'll, I'm available you know, <laughs> <laughs> putting a little bit going you know what I mean nice 
yeah, you're doing great work, Mocha. Yeah, you know what I mean? You're doing some massive yeah. work on yourself. And, you know, I know a lot of people are really appreciating now you're yeah. holding the space. And I think as well, like, for people who almost can't get on men without masks, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're reaching that, 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 like that container of men who, who might not be ready for to retreat away from yeah. the other pool or who or may not necessarily have the funds, you know, because men without masks isn't cheap, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You know, so you're just hitting that, like, that angle where it's like, okay, well, we're in Liverpool and, yeah, you're retreating only for a couple of hours once a week. Yeah. And so it's a, even though I'm not denying the the depth that you're offering, yeah. it's it, it's certainly a, 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 a massive stepping stone in a container yeah. for, for men to feel into this work that you're so passionate about and yeah. that, you know, you, you lean into yourself. So keep up the great work. Yeah. Look what I'm watching from, you know, you know I'm watching from the sides, you know what I mean? And, um, and it's only just the beginning, you know. Yeah. I, I think, you know, these relationships that you're striking, especially, you know, with 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 the, with the guys, yeah. you know, with the, with the knife culture and all that, and this this the gangs and that. I think this is going to be absolutely massive. So yeah, yeah. keep you, up brother. the great work. I love you, mate. Love you, mate. Um, Jimmy, what's, yeah. what's going on for you? Know you said you were going to take a couple of weeks out there, and yeah. So I've decided to uh, only a little, just a little step back for a little while, but the, the community still the the, the the community aspect of it. Yeah. The, um, we cancelled an, an event officially for tomorrow, but I know a few of the guys are still yeah. still going and stuff. So the community will never ever fade away. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be starting the, the the gatherings back up again pretty soon. Um, but with that as well, I'm sort of in the process of setting it up, setting up as a CIC. Nice. Um, so it's a community interest company. With that, we're going to be. I've got a, someone a bid writer. Lovely. Who's looking at bids? Um, so we can have something more substantial. Yeah. Um, and eventually, I'm for, for me, my long term, um, it's going to be a centre. Lovely. Uh, Cold Moors Community Centre. Brilliant. Loads of big ice baths, yeah. tanks. Yeah, mm-hmm. nice. Um, Boss. And, uh, and for me, what it is as well as my demographic, there's, there's no demographic. We've yeah. got 75 year old women. Yeah. We've got, we've got 18 year old lads come yeah. together. Lovely. Um, and I feel, I feel like for me, that's what's important. Yeah. Um, it's community. Yeah. Um, Massive, that's, that, that's, isn't it? Every, everyone's welcome. Yeah. And, and everything is welcome. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's just sort of maintaining that growth yeah. and sort of keeping it in, in check. And sort of also as well for me um, is remember I'm only human. Yeah. That's that's what I'm, I keep on forgetting. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to do about 20, 20 as you as yeah. you are, as you are, as you are. <laughs> and then sometimes I'm going, okay, when, yeah. when, does, when do we have a bit of Jimmy time? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, so that's what I'm going to have over the next couple of weeks. Nice. But with that... Um, the cold water community is going to be strong, stronger, yeah, uh, more streamlined, um, monetized, yeah, as we said before, yeah, yeah which so will be a big thing, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just know, and because I think money holds a, it, if the intention is clean, mm. it, it really, um, it, it it brings about a, a healthy and a clean transaction mm. for the for the energy, you know, because you're not selling time, you're selling energy. Mm. You know what I mean? You're selling your experiences. And uh, I think money certainly it, it it gives that opportunity to to keep things really streamlined, a lot of synergy, a lot of cleanliness. Um, so yeah, good luck with that one. And obviously, you know, you're a fireman as well. You know what I mean? So you're not just playing with water; you're playing with fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I am <laughs> looking um, forward as well to start doing my own standalone stuff. Yeah, uh, where I am looking at um, fire, adding fire into that. Yeah, you know, lovely. Cold mm, walking, nice. brilliant. Uh, cold walking on hot coals. Yeah, this is um, awesome. Doing all that properly. I'm looking into that. And yeah. I've been sort of doing. Um, a lot of online so that can be a retreat kind of in the end you yeah, know what i mean yeah. taking people on More an experience stuff. and then you know adding maybe the other elements as well you know what i mean you know it's gonna be earth, you know wind and, and and yeah loads of just loads of room for so much growth you know what i mean but i think what's brilliant is that you've done all this off your own back you've done all this for free and you haven't missed a session you know what i mean like you know again it's Incredible admiration for how you showed up, you know what I mean? Mm. Especially in times of challenge, you know, being challenged by certain people and or a few trolls or even the police, you know what I mean? And yeah. so you're keeping things squeaky clean, but how you've showed up, you know, and the measure of your consistency and discipline is uh, is one of a king, you know what I mean? And mm. so Thank I you. um I personally, uh, you know, I haven't been to a session yet. Um, but always watching from the sides, and I think you're doing a great job. So keep up the great work. Okay, thanks for coming along to see us today. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, really appreciate that. Johnny, checking out. Checking out. If anybody wants to get in touch with me, you can't because I'm too busy. <laughs> 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 Sorry. 
You can go on my Instagram and watch me do some cold wars and some crazy runs, but for work, too busy. Yeah. You're, you're, you're <laughs> a big runner, mate, aren't you? are an man. avid runner, you know. Mm. Just just finishing off, like, tell us a little bit about your running. Um, probably from the cold wars, really, what you talked about before, removing your limitations. Mm. Just fell back in love with something I used to do as a child, mm. and it's gone from doing a 10K to a marathon to 50 kilometres to 60, and... Hopefully this Sunday I'll do 100k. I've wow. said it. It's out there now, so wow. I've got to stick to my word. Incredible. Yeah, mm. thank you for sharing that. Keep up all you do, mate. You know what I mean? You know I love you dearly. You yeah, know, I love too, man. watching you, you know, create this magic, you know, in all of our lives. And and I can truly say, like, it wouldn't it wouldn't be the same without you. I mean, it really Thanks. wouldn't. We all um we all look up to you, even though you're sitting there and behind the scenes doing what you do. We um we all definitely want and need Johnny Hunter in our lives, don't we, fellas? Like, you know, he's, um, there's one thing I can <laughs> say is that there's no one's ever said anything bad. There's never been a crossword, you know, and, and and you actually show up for everybody. You know, there's all these circles and and you showed up for everybody and you offer yourself totally. You're real with everybody. There's a real neutrality and a, and a steadfastness that weaves into everyone's life. So yeah, a lot of, and, and I think we're all excited to watch your journey as well. You know, mm -hmm. we're all watching from afar and um, me, I get to witness it really closely because we uh, we wear together and we spend a lot of time together as well. We like a nice cold beer as well, mate. Don't you? A couple of frosty ones. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, so I'm really glad you were here. Thanks for mm -hmm. showing up today and, and, and leaning into the conversation. So fellas, good luck. Thank you for being here. Creating Space, episode 15. Great conversation. Uh, you know, let's go and have a, a frosty one and, uh, and have a great weekend, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. man. Okay. Cheers, fellas. Bye for now. Creating Space is sponsored by the Scouse Guru app, an all-purpose meditation app that feeds into all your needs, developing peace of mind, increasing mental focus, lowering stress levels, while discovering inner stillness, awakening your potential and educating you on all matters related to human behavior and personal development. Download the app for free on the App Store or get it on Google Play today.